Hey guys, so today I'll be making macarons for my farmer's market and I'm going to take you along on the ride. So I forgot a few things at the grocery store if you guys wouldn't mind. A quick detour. Come along with me. Don't care what you came from. Alright, so since it's just an emergency run, we're just getting eggs. We're gonna go to Trader Joe's. So we're going to be doing the French method today um, as opposed to the Italian method and that's just because of time restraints so I can pump out a ton more uh, macarons with using the French method than Italian. And I'll give you some hints on how to make So it's just as good as the Italian method. Keep the lips out, okay? Alright, thanks for coming along to the grocery store with us. We are back, the kids are asleep, coffee is in hand, and we're ready to go. I'm going to be doing macarons. So we've got one flavor that I still need to do for my farmer's market, and I'm going to just take you along with me, and it's going to be, it's going to be fun. So we're going to be doing lemon rosemary. I just wanted to give you a brief overview first before we get started on the French method and my process. I use the French method, like I said before, because it is quicker to pump out those macs. Less dishes, less time, I already said that. And that's good. <laughs> so, talk really quickly. So in theory, when you're making macs, you look at the recipe, it looks easy. You've got a meringue to make with the French method and then your dries. You put them together, pipe them out, bake them. Right, well that's in theory. But in real life, there are many critical moments during that process that can ruin your cook. You can get crackerons, uh, lopsided macs, ones that spread when you pipe it so it's not even a, a nice circle. So what we're gonna go through, um, when we go through this, I'm just going to point out those critical moments and really focus on those today. And then later on, we can do a full tutorial for macarons in the future, so. Come on in to my kitchen. Come on in to my kitchen. Come on in to my kitchen. <laughs>
sugar in a separate bowl and then um, we'll get finally started on the real deal. We got my Trader Joe's eggs that we got and I'm just going to use the egg wipes. like it. Let's see. What do you think? More? I think we're good, guys. Alright, we've got our stiff peak. The way to test this out if you really want to at home. Put your bowl over your head. Nothing's coming out. Nothing's coming out. Have you tried that? <laughs> All right, so I moved the meringue over to a wide bowl so I can see what's happening on the bottom of the bowl easier. I'm gonna put half of those dry ingredients. We're gonna make sure you guys get this right. So at this point, it's best. They're two way different um, consistencies and you're gonna just try to temper, sort of to say, even though it's not temperature, temper in the dries. You don't want to deflate your batter at this point. You just want to incorporate it. So once it's, it's not going to be 100% incorporated before I add my second batch. I'm just getting most of the excess to be um, in the batter a little bit. If that's how you want to say it. And now I'm going to add the second batch. And then do the same thing. I'm going to round my bowl with my spatula underneath the meringue and bringing it over. Around, up and over. Around, up and over. Just to incorporate. And again, I am not deflating yet. Not deflating. You want to have as much air left in that meringue as possible so you can control how much you deflate at the end. Because if you deflate it all in the beginning, you're going to be poop out of luck when you need to actually mix evenly the dries with the, with the meringue. Okay, so still nice and airy, right? I'm going to deflate the batter and this is the process of macronage. the deflating process. It also makes your batter look nice and smooth and you're gonna get those nice smooth shells if done properly. You don't want any lumps of the dry. Every once in a while you want to check to see the consistency. All right 
I still have to keep going. I want it to be flowing continuously, but a little, pretty slowly off my spatula. So what I'm doing is I go around, oh, up and over, and push out the air. Around, up and over, push out the air. All right. Let's check it. Some people describe it as molten lava, but who knows what that looks like, not me. So, <laughs> I like to just do a, a ribbon or a figure eight. And if it doesn't break, broke a little bit, I'm gonna go a little farther, then we're ready to go. If you're at all worried, less is more in this case, because your batter's gonna get a little bit worked in that piping bag too. And it will deflate more. That looks great. That's gorgeous. Let's show you the figure eight. Okay, it's not breaking. Let's do it. tops which these are good and if they come clean off this little pack good once these cool I'll take them all off I'll sandwich them together and store them until I fill later thanks so much for tuning in guys and please remember subscribe to our channel share it love it Follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and of course, I will see you in the next episode. Crushed it. <laughs>